exam two um, content for topic five and topic six, and we're going to cover uh, CNS depressants today. So on the first slide, we're talking about drugs that affect the sympathetic ner nervous system. Epinephrine is an adrenergic agonist and binds to the alpha and beta receptors. It's given mostly in emergency situations such as anaphylactic shock or myocardial infarction. Metropolol is an adrenergic antagonist and is also it's a selective beta blocker. So something to remember about beta blockers is they all end in LOL. Okay? It's mainly used for bradycardia, heart block, and used with renal and hepatic disease. There's quite a few contraindications, adverse effects, and drug-drug interactions. You need to know these. These are very common drugs. These beta blockers, you will give, be given them very frequently in the hospital. So it's something that you need to put in your nurse base knowledge and have for all time. On the next slide, we start talking about some benzodiazepines. So these are major CNS depressants. They're used for anxiety muscle relaxant, acute seizures. Benzos are the number one drug for alcohol withdrawal. Most benzodiazepines end in PAM, P-A-M, and PAM is your friend. As you get into the acute care settings, you'll be using the Ativan, lorazepam, which is the most common benzodiazepine, and you'll be using it as a protocol set for alcohol withdrawal, and you will see alcohol withdrawal quite frequently. Uh, they are, it can also be used, Ativan and Lorazepam, it's the same drug, uh, can be used for someone who's something simple like claustrophobic and they're getting an MRI. So they might get a small dose of the Lorazepam in order to help them relax so they can get an MRI done. <clears throat> so these are not necessarily drugs that are taken for people who are withdrawing from everything, but they're used periodically for anxiety as well. So then you have Tegretol, Depakote, Dilatin. These are all anti-elliptics. They work to increase the seizure threshold so they don't seize so frequently. There's a lot of contraindications with these drugs and as well as drug-drug interactions. So in the following parts of the PowerPoint, when we get to the concept maps, these are the things that you're going to want to put under these uh, types of drugs. On the next slide, <clears throat> We're talking about levodopa and carbidopa. These are two drugs that are combined to make up a tablet we call Cinemet. It's one of the main uh, drugs used for Parkinsonism. So uh, it balances your dopamine and your acetylcholine. There are multiple adverse effects to this medication, but the benefits always outweigh the risks. So there's many patients on these on the Cinemet, and they get the tardive dyskinesia, they have a little bit of shaking with the Parkinson's, these are all can be side effects of the medication themselves. So then we have our MAOIs and SSRIs used to treat uh, depression. And keep in mind, well, butrin is in its own class, and it's also used, uh, it's a number one aid to, for smoking sensation. So these drugs have common side effects, weight gain, sexual dysfunction, and increased risk of suicide. Again, just like the carvedopa levodopa, there are increased risks, but the benefits always outweigh the risks. We get down to Haldol, Haldol Seroquel, and Respiridol. They're used to treat SMI clients. SMI clients are severe mental illness clients. These clients have clinical diagnoses of mental illness. These are the types of drugs that they use to stay calm, PTSDers, uh, those types of clients are usually put on these kinds of medications. Uh, clients who have uh, nightmares, trouble sleeping, Seroquel is very common, commonly used for that. Um, we also use Haldol periodically as an intramuscular injection if we have a very aggressive elderly client that you don't want to over-medicate um, because of the respiratory depression with some of these drugs. So Haldol can be used to just kind of take the edge off and um, help them be a little bit less combative. All right, then we go to our next slide. These supplements are used to increase calcium with vitamin D absorption. Most of these are used to treat either osteoporosis or rheumatoid arthritis. As you get into your med surge section next semester, you'll be working with these disease processes on an individual basis, and you'll be doing a lot of concept maps on disease processes. But for pharmacology, we try to do our concept maps basically off the classifications. 
And then I do want to add that allopurinol is used to reduce uric acid, kind of like uh, used with gout. Okay. So then I know you've seen all of these concept maps. I hope you have a copy of one and that you use these to help map out your classifications of your drugs. Print these out as we go through them after we get done so that you can use them to continue to build on. There's a lot more information that needs to go on these concept maps, but what I've got here for you is just a generalist guideline. So the first one, uh, antidepressants. So you have your SSRIs and your MAOIs. So you want to get those down there and do a lot of the risks, adverse reactions, clinical indications, and side effects. So all those classifications need to be printed on there. Your anti-elliptics, again, you want to go through and just kind of briefly make sure you cover each one of those topics, the drug, the class, mechanism of action, the indication, any contraindications, adverse effects, any drug-drug interactions, and then you can always add your patient education at the end. And then this one's probably going to be the most simplest one for you for the anti-Parkinsonism because you just have the carvodopa, levodopa. It's really the only two drugs you're going to have to worry about with this disease process for the purposes of this class. So continue to just build this one as well. Antipsychotics, Haldol, Risperidone. Now this is a, this is a lot of information uh, for these. So you can do each if you needed, felt like you needed to break it down a little bit more. You could do a concept map on Haldol, a concept map on Seroquel, a concept map on Risperidone. Basically, again, mechanisms of action, indications for use, contraindications, drug-drug interactions. It should be the same um, built template every time you do these drugs so that you can go through them over and over in a systematic measure. That way it helps you remember them so much easier. Okay, then you have your uh, anticholinergics and there's a lot of these as well. So you might need more than one concept map to kind of get it down. When you start looking at the drugs and you have the ones that have common side effects or common drug drug inter interactions or common mechanisms of actions, those are ones you want separate concept maps for. Benzodiazepines. Again, these are your friend. Pam is your friend. <laughs> your benzodiazepines will get you through, through some of the most um, intense situations with clients. So get to know these drugs as well as your beta blockers very, very well because they you will use these very, very frequently. Then you have cholinergic agents. There's a few drugs out there um, in these topics, type 5 and 6, kind of in a class of their own, kind of an independent uh, drug. So you'll need to kind of listen to your instructor and your faculty as they lecture and make sure you're picking up on these ones that aren't as common but you're definitely going to expect to know that information. Then we get down to epinephrine. Epinephrine, as you get into your med surgical class and you're doing ACLS, epinephrine is your emergency drug you'll use in code situations. So this is something you really need to um, get familiar with. We use it for emergency anaphylactic reactions, bee stings, that kind of thing. So, or peanut allergies, we see a lot of peanut allergies nowadays in the ED. So get to know epi and what it's used for. And there's your beta blockers, your metropolol, um, labetalol. All of those beta blockers are pretty much, the mechanisms of action are quite similar. Side effects are quite similar. You'll need to know how it affects the blood pressure, how much it's going to bring it down, when you would want to hold that medication and call a physician in case the blood pressure is dropping a little bit too much and you're kind of questioning whether or not you want to dose that patient with that that day. So make sure you know what your parameters are for these beta blockers. And our next slide, mood stabilizing drugs, lithium carbonate. So this is a, another major psychotic drug, the small classification. Um, for this drug, so it's probably in a class of its own. And I think that's about it. So these concept maps, again, are just a guideline to kind of get you started. Pharmacology is tough. Uh, there's a lot to it. So getting started early and getting organized with these concept maps is really uh, your best way to study. 
So um, that's about all I have for today. So we covered our drugs for the CNS for topic five and six for exam, or mainly topic five for exam two. So my suggestion for you to continue study and reinforcement of the content is to continue to do the concept maps. As always, please connect with your faculty member for any additional support. They all have office hours every week. There's always an opportunity for you to get additional academic support through the, the university, the library study sessions, and of course your peer study sessions. I urge you always to be in a large study group. We welcome your feedback for these contact clinic. I hope it was uh, some help for you, and good luck in your class. Thank you. Bye.